Antarctica is the world's most remote continent. It's covered in snow and ice and is home to the South Pole and a lot of penguins. It's also the coldest, driest and windiest place on Earth. So why have we come to Cambridge to find out about it? Because this is the British Antarctic Survey. It's the headquarters of all the British scientists that go to Antarctica. Let's go find out more. No humans live permanently in Antarctica. The only people working there are scientists exploring this incredible land of ice, snow and rock. One of them is Tamsin Gray, who we met back in Cambridge. So Tamsin, why do scientists go to Antarctica? Well, I'm a meteorologist, so my job is to go there and run lots of experiments which are looking at climate change. And there's lots of signals we can see of climate change in Antarctica, because if the temperatures there warm up a few degrees, we see ice starting to melt, and we can see that the glaciers starting to flow out into the sea, and then the sea levels can rise, and that affects us back here in Britain. Even though there's lots of global warming going on at the moment, it still must be pretty cold down there. Yeah, that's right. It gets down to about minus 50 in the places where I've been. Uh, and to work outside in those temperatures, we need lots of special clothing and equipment. So how about we go upstairs and I'll show you some of the equipment we use. OK. Here we've got a selection of uh, all the things we use to keep our hands and feet warm for every different situation. So uh, you can try on my favourite gloves if you want. These ones are really great. The leopard skin ones are always the most popular. Very stylish. Um, yeah, you've got some strange looking ones over here and what we use this for is when we're um, fueling the vehicles. So if you want to pump petrol into the car and you don't want to get it on your hands, then... Uh... How would you like do things in these because they're really thick? Yeah, they're really difficult to do fiddly things, so we maybe take another pair and, and wear those underneath. And then uh, you can do your fiddly job and kick, stick your hands straight back in there. Mm. And uh, oh. then they warm up really quickly, yeah, even when it's really cold. Having cold, cold hands is no fun, so these are some of the most important bits of kit. Um, the other bit that's hard to keep warm is your feet. So we've got all sorts of different boots that, uh, we've, I mean, we've got some boots that you can wear for mountaineering, you can catch crampons on. What do you use these for? These are called tent booties, and so some people spend up to three months living in a, in a tent in really cold, minus 30, minus 40 temperatures. That's and when cold. you're just sitting around in your tent, if it's a blizzard outside, you can wear these, and it's like having a sleeping bag for your feet. Yeah, they're slippers. These, these ones are, are really great if you're um, trekking up a glacier or something where you might get cold feet. So these, these are for really serious, um, maybe for some people who are trying to get information about how the glacier is flowing and how it's changing with climate change. <laughs> Would you like to try some of this kit on? Yeah. Then... Might mess your hair up a little bit. So when it's really cold, you don't want to let any of your skin get exposed to the cold. So if you put this up over your face, <laughs> and then, uh, then if you get Tasty. a nice pair of goggles like this, and then with a hat on as well, none of your skin gets cold. <laughs> Can you breathe under there? And you're waterproof and windproof, which is really important because when it gets windy down there, that's when it gets really cold. Join us next time when we'll shiver in Antarctic temperatures by getting shut in a giant fridge. And when the ice starts melting, we travel back in time. And we'll get to try out some awesome quad bikes, a monster snow truck, and find out what a snotsicle is. And yeah, it's